Hello, Verbling.com members. Welcome to another, welcome to another English class brought to you by Verbling.com. Verbling.com is where you can connect and practice with a native speaker instantly. Hello, my name is Jeff Watson. I am originally from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, but I have been living and teaching English in Latin America for six years, and I am currently speaking to you from Chile, the South American country, and I am living and working in their capital city, Santiago. And so this hour, we are going to be reading about the topic of the <coughs> fish tuna, which is a very highly prized species of fish. And essentially, it is becoming a delicacy and something that is in demand around the world, uh, especially for its use in making sushi and uh, the in for Japanese restaurants. And so hello to everyone. Welcome. Uh, I would like all of you to please uh, see if you can go to the verbling.com website. I have uploaded the file GW40. This is on the verbling.com website, the live classes page. If you look for the information about the class, you will see the link that will allow you to download the document. All right, great. So uh, what I'd like to do is to ask uh, everyone to please introduce themselves. And we, uh, as after they have uh, introduced themselves, could they please answer these questions? I'm, I'm going to put the questions in the Verbling chat box. So do you eat fish? Uh, do you ever buy tuna? Do you order tuna at Japanese sushi restaurants? Are sushi restaurants becoming more popular in your country? And is canned tuna a popular food item in your country? Uh, I can say yes to all of these. <laughs> so uh, I would like to start by saying hello to uh, Chilo. Hello, Chilo. How are you? I'm good. How, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Chiho. I'm from Japan. So of right. course I I ate the tuna always. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and it's it's very expensive. It's becoming more expensive. Uh depend on quality. Yes, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you can see red part of tuna. It's very cheap. But a mm -hmm. little bit pink with red, okay. a little bit pricey. Okay, yeah. right. And do you buy it at the store and then prepare it at home? Yes, of course. <laughs> well, but how how do you prepare it then? Um. Do you make sushi with it, or do you cook it? Ah, uh, both, both. We can okay. cook, or we can eat raw. Or okay. I like a sashimi. Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, 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 Enoch, uh, are you there? Now you need to turn on your microphone. So on the Google Hangout screen, there is an icon. Ah. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Enoch. Yeah. I'm from Colombia. Uh, it's the first, the first time uh, I was uh, Berlin. Welcome. Uh, uh, good. Uh, I am 20 years ago, 20 years old. Um, um, I'm so fine to talk to you today. Okay, 
Great. So uh, thank you for introducing yourself. And then uh, how about eating fish? And we're, we're getting a lot of noise from your microphone. See if you can speak more directly into your microphone. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to understand you, Enoch. Uh, is it possible for you to go to a place that is quiet? Is, is it is it possible for you to go to a place that is quieter with with less noise? Uh, oh, that that the street is so near. Uh, okay. Because, um, uh, okay. So uh, you you do eat fish? Oh yes yes. Uh, there's in Colombia uh, are a fish that is so popular. It's the boca chica. Uh, okay. All the people uh, eat that, and I come from uh, a town that the fish are so delicious. Right. Uh, Sorry, please, uh, if you can, uh, put the name of the fish in the, in the chat box. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, Hami, hello. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I am here. How are you? Welcome. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, too. I am Hamid uh, from Turkey. And uh, we have no uh, original Japanese uh, tuna. In my country, we have different uh, tuna. And uh, when I was at my bachelor, uh, I can I could uh, buy sometimes. Okay, when when you were a bachelor. Yes. Okay, you uh, bought tuna and, and cooked it sometimes. Tuna is different. Uh, it looks like a brownish uh, color. Okay. Maybe frying or uh, looks like this. Okay. And uh, every Sunday, uh, my father uh, buys the fish, and we can uh, eat with my family. Okay. Also, Great. last Sunday, uh, we ate the anchovy. Anchovies. Yes. Ah, okay. All right. Great. They have a very strong flavor. Yes, and uh, in Turkey, uh, this food is very famous. Okay. Especially Black Sea region. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Too. And then I'd like to go on to uh, Islam Oabi. Sorry? No, I'm, I'm going to go on to the next person. And, okay, okay, uh, okay. The, 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 thank you. The name is uh, Islam Oabi. Okay, I, I'm sorry we don't hear you, and and so I'm going to go on to Ismail. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Oh. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Yes. Yeah, so I am Ismail Wafi. I am from Morocco, English student for English studies, second year. Uh, for concerning the topic of this uh, discussion. Eating fish, yes, I like eating fish for for pleasure yeah, because, as you know, that in Morocco we have many kinds of fish that are delicious. So, is, is the what is the ocean that you have in Morocco? Is it all the Mediterranean Sea, or yeah, do you well, also have coast on the Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, we have both, both of them. Mm -hmm. We have the first one in the south, uh, and second one in the north. Okay, great. And do you ever buy tuna? Yes, yeah, sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. because we have another kinds of fish. Okay, right. Yeah. And are Japanese like sushi English. restaurants popular in Morocco? No, we don't. <coughs> we don't have them. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Uh, I'm go and uh, Ismail, the, yeah. the next Ismail. <laughs> We yeah, have two Ismails. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Yes, Hello. welcome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello everybody. I am Ismail from Turkey, Ankara. Uh, I I have never uh, bought a tuna in Turkey, Jeff, but uh, I use uh, sometimes canned tuna because uh, my family don't like to eat fish. I try to get some uh, omega-3 with <laughs> right, canned good. tuna. We use it in mm -hmm. salads, with salads. Good, good. So your family doesn't like uh, eating fish, you were saying, but yes, yeah, canned canned tuna is very very popular in Canada. Is it is it the same in in Turkey? Oh, uh, it is not so pop popular, but uh, we have also the sea fish. Uh, there are uh, three seas around Turkey geography. Uh, right. We use uh, wild, uh, we can uh, arrive too many wild fish, especially uh, sea fishes, anchovies, and there are lots of uh, lake in Turkey. We can uh, find lake fishes, catfish, carp, yeah. and uh, yes. Jeff. Oh, great, and great. So both fish from the ocean and freshwater fish. Yeah. All right. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to, and uh, I, the picture is of a can of uh, a can of tuna, and and so uh, Manuel, hello. Hello. Welcome. How are you? Thank Good. you. Uh, well, I'm from the from the south of Spain, and as my neighbor, my Moroccan neighbor Ismael, we enjoy a lot of uh, different kind of, of fresh fish in our seas. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm, uh, tuna is uh, as well fished uh, near here, mm -hmm. and and a lot of people uh, buy tuna here. All uh, um, uh, uh, the canned uh, canned tuna is uh, important also, and that's it. Yeah. No. Great. And so I have a picture of some steaks, some tuna steaks uh, on the barbecue. <laughs> All right. And uh, I'm going to move on to Rod. Hello, Rod. Hello, Jeff. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Good to see you again. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. My family, we, we don't eat uh, tuna, but... When I was on the coast, when I was living on the coast, uh, we usually eat that kind of fish. And in ceviche, you know, this uh, Peruvian dish. Yes. We 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 use the that kind of fish, tuna. Oh, we're, so we're really? that. Okay. Well, that must be delicious. Yeah. So, just quickly, could you describe what ceviche is? Okay, it's a Peruvian uh, dish. Uh, it includes raw fish uh, in citrus juices and with onions, chopped onions, and, and the spices. Yeah, okay, excellent. Yeah, it's delicious. And then I've got a picture of some tuna that has been grilled or barbecued and they have just cooked it a little bit so it's still pink uh, in the middle all right and uh, Rosa Maria hello welcome hello yeah. Rosa yeah. is good yeah, yeah. can uh, you hear me yes, yes you can please go ahead okay I'm from Spain and in Spain is very usual eat uh, tuna I love eating tuna, be, mm, for example, a sandwich with tomato, tuna, and cheese. Okay. Now, was this from nice. a can? This is canned tuna? Is. Okay. Do, do you understand okay. my question? No. Oh, uh, the tuna that you use to make a sandwich, is it from a can? 
Yes, a from, can? Oh, okay. yes from the tin. Yes, from a tin. Okay, yes. and do you ever buy fresh tuna? Yes, sometimes. Okay. But I like better the tin tuna. Okay. All right. And how about uh, sushi and, and uh, in, Japanese restaurants? In Spain, it's very unusual to look for sushi. It's ah, more usual to, other kind of restaurant. Uh, to see, uh, it's it's unusual to see a sushi restaurant. Yes, you can find in big cities, but in other places, it's very difficult. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. So, uh, great. Welcome to you all. Uh, super job with the introductions. It was very interesting. And now, what I wanted to do was to start by reading uh, an article that you can see on the screen share. So, the price of overfishing, so that the, the price meaning the consequence of overfishing. So, one tuna, the, the fish, one tuna sells for one million pounds in Japan and that the demand for sushi is still depleting the stocks, the population of the fish. And so it's perfect uh, that we have uh, someone from Japan that can start the, reading the story. First of all, I wanted to show the pictures. Actually, um, uh, sorry, I just... Uh, Chi, Chiyo? Yes, yeah. Could you please describe these pictures, uh, if, if you can? Um, this is, I think, maybe a very big fish market. Maybe, right. yeah, everybody selling the fish and the... Yeah. Mm. And, and this was a tuna that was purchased for one million pounds, which is over one million dollars. Wow. <laughs> okay, and do you have a, a comment about this picture? Yes, yes. Why is the uh, tuna prices are so high? Yeah. Well, uh, now I think, and, and uh, Chilo, uh, uh, sorry, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Chilo can maybe um, help me with this. It seems that uh, sometimes companies buy or restaurants buy a beautiful perfect tuna mm. and they pay a very high price for it as kind of uh, a special celebration or a bit of a tradition? It, it, do you no, know, do you no we don't have a, no? any custom, kind of this oh. custom. Oh, okay. Just, and just a uh, very famous restaurant want to get a very good quality fish. Okay. And that's why uh, the price is getting higher and higher. Oh, okay. Said, yeah. Right. And so it seems that this fish was just uh, absolutely perfect quality. So there's a uh, man working in the market showing the head of one of the tuna. And then you have these gentlemen cutting the tuna. Uh, do you have a, a comment, uh, Chilo? Yeah, it still looks very hard. <laughs> yeah, okay. And well, they're being very, very careful, I'm sure, to, to cut it perfectly so that there's no waste because it's such a valuable uh, item. And could you explain this for us? Chilo? Ah, me? Uh, uh, yes, please, please. This is uh, part of tuna, very expensive. Uh, because very tasty and very mm -hmm. juicy and yes. very uh, tender loin. I, I sorry. Yeah. Tender. Um, tender. Very tender. No, so, you so juicy, so, tasty, tasty, and tender. tender. So no. like a taste like a meat. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, it tastes a bit like beef. Yeah, right? beef. Okay. Great. And then, could you please um, read this first paragraph for us? Me? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> okay. A bluefin tuna sold for more than one million at a Tokyo Pound. auction. Pound at uh -huh. a Tokyo auction yesterday. The record 
nearly three times a previous high set last year, comes as environment, environmentalist warned that stock of the ma major list speedy fish are being depleted worldwide as demand for sushi rise. Rises. Rises. Okay, and then just to help with uh, environmentalists. Environmentalists and majestic. Majestic. So it's a very beautiful fish. It's very fast, which is speedy. Speedy is a synonym of fast. It swims very quickly. And so, good. So three times, or almost three times, the record price. Okay, and so what I'd like to do now is to go to, uh, ah, let's see, uh, Enoch, could you read the next paragraph for us? Oh, yes. Uh, in the years, there is a town at Tokyo Spring, Tsukihi, Fish Market, the 20... 200? Uh, yes, uh, tuna cart of northeastern Japan sold for uh, 155 million. 155 mile men sail with Yoni Yagi, a market official. The fish turned up pink and red meat. This price for sushi and sashimi. The best sizes by the blue color or total can sell for 2,000 yen. yen per piece at, at market Tokyo Switches Bar. Okay, thank you very much. Great, uh, great. So I just want to uh, clarify, uh, I just want to clarify that sprawling is big meaning covering a large area and it was 222 kilograms the tuna and the money that we're talking about is the yen and I, I, I'm quite sure that this is the uh, symbol for pound and tender is very soft but what, what you say tender okay and so the best slices of this fatty bluefin uh, in, in Japan, it's called Otoro, uh, that can sell for a huge amount of money, <laughs> over 15 pounds per piece at upmarket. These are very fashionable uh, and um, exclusive Tokyo sushi bars. All right, so great. And so I'd like to go on to uh, the next uh, paragraph. Uh, Hami, could you read the next paragraph for us, please? Okay, sir. <clears throat> the Japanese eat 80% uh, of the bluefin tuna caught worldwide, and much of the global catch is shipped to Japan for consumption. The winning bidder, Kiyoshi Kimura, president of Kiyomura uh, Corporation, which operates the sushi Zanmaya restaurant chain, said the price was a bit high, but that he wanted to encourage Japan, according to Kyoto News Agency. He was planning to serve the fish to customers yesterday. Okay, great. And so uh, that's kind of interesting that uh, the Japanese market consumes 80% of the bluefin tuna that is caught worldwide. All right, so it's incredibly popular in Japan. And he said that uh, over $1 million was a bit high. <laughs> so that's a little, a little bit high. <laughs> All right. And, and, but what, uh, what did he mean by, uh, and I'm going to ask uh, uh, Chi, Chiyo, uh, Chilo, uh, what did he mean by he wanted to encourage Japan? Do you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, uh, Maybe to kind of... I don't know. 
Like after the uh, earthquake? Uh, earthquake. Uh, yeah. Okay. Encourage the economy. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So he was willing to pay extra, it sounds like, right, in, in an auction. And so there were other people competing to buy the same fish at an auction. All right, great. And so, uh, Islam, are you ready? Are you there? Okay, so we, we don't hear you. I'm going to move on to the uh, uh, Ismail. Yes, Jeff? Yes, please. Could you read this paragraph for us? Mr. Yes. Kimura? Mr. Kimura also set the previous record of 56.4 million yen at last year's new at last year's New Year's auction, which tends to attract high bids as a celebratory way to kick off the new year or get some publicity. The high prices do not necessarily reflect exceptionally high fish quality. The price works out, out, works out at 700. So uh, you were muted, Ismail, by someone. Uh, go ahead, Ismail. The price works out at 700,000 yen per kilogram or 2,000. 242 per pound sterling. Good. And then I add, yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> 7,700 United States dollar per kilogram. <laughs> okay, so that's the price. All right, great. So uh, it seems as though perhaps this man wanted to celebrate his success, his business success, and uh, to perhaps get some publicity. All right, so uh, let's, uh, Manuel, are you ready? Uh, yes, I am. Great, could you read these two uh, paragraphs for us? Stocks of all three bluefin species, the Pacific, Southern, and Atlantic, have fallen over the past 15 years because of overfishing. The population of another species, the southern bluefin, which uh, swims in the southern Pacific, has plunged by more than 90% over the past 40 years. Stocks of bluefin caught in the Atlantic and Mediterranean fell by 60% between 1997. And do you see the rest? And 2007, owing to rampant, often, I, often illegal, overfishing and lax quotas. Although there has been some improvement in recent years, experts say the outlook for the species is still fragile. Good, fragile. All right, just to help with uh, the pronunciation excuse me, of plunged, plunged, plunged. That is to go down very rapidly. And you can see that the population has reduced in size by 90%. That's horrible. So the, the Pacific, Southern Pacific. All right. And so uh, the species is still in a very delicate and sensitive and fragile situation. All right, rampant uh, is, uh, let me see, what is that? I'm going to look for a synonym here. Rampant means a lot of it, um, a lot of illegal fishing. Widely, maybe. Yeah, widely, oh, okay, yes. And illegal my, fishing. My program is taking such a long time. It's, very frustrating. Okay, so yeah, it, it means a lot of overfishing and often illegal. All right, great. Perfect. So let's uh, move on and we've got Rod. Hello, Rod, are you ready? Yeah. Great. And so uh, could you please uh, read this small piece of text for us? Okay. 
In November, the 48 member nations of the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tunnels vote to maintain strict catch limits on the species, although some countries argued for higher limits. Okay, great. And so limits are the same as quotas, numbers. Okay, and so we see some frozen tunas, and that, that again looks like a, a Japanese market. And great. And so uh, let's, let's move on to some more uh, information. This is a different, uh, a different topic. We're going to talk about bluefin tuna aquaculture, but it's not fish farming. <clears throat> it's ranching, trying to uh, ranch the tuna. Okay, and so Rod, could you continue for us, please? Okay, uh, let me scroll yeah. down. Good. Uh, okay. Can tuna ranching, mm -hmm. bluefin tuna aquaculture, can tuna ranching help alleviate pressure on wild, wild tuna populations? Okay, please continue. In the Mediterranean Sea, a relatively new aquaculture industry is ranching one of the world's largest wild fish species. The giant Atlantic bluefin tuna, uh, driven largely by the growing popularity of sushi. These lucrative operations capture wild tuna and then fatten them up for slaughter. Slaughter. Bluefin tuna. Slaughter. And, and I'll get you to stop there, thanks. And, and so just to help with relatively new it's relatively new and the industry is being driven largely by uh, the popularity of sushi and to fatten them up to fatten them up <laughs> and so uh, do you understand that Rod? Uh, yes, yes, they, they feed them? Yes, yeah. good. So they capture the tuna and they feed them until they grow bigger and then slaughtering animals is to kill them. That's the term that we use when you are killing an animal so that you can eat it to slaughter an animal. All right, so I, I have a, a picture here of, I, uh, these are one of the nets where the farmed, or sorry, where the ranched tuna are being held. They're obviously uh, harvesting the tuna at this point. And we have a picture of some of the uh, tuna ranching pens or corrals that are being used to contain the tuna. Okay, and so let's, uh, let's move on. I'm just going to try and push this down a little bit and we'll go, uh, where are we here? Let's go to here. And so the, the next person is... Uh, yes, they're ready. Ah, Rosa Maria, could you read this paragraph for us, please? Of course. Tuna ranchers believe that the operators take pressure of wild tuna population because the tuna fishermen get a better price for their cuts and therefore need to fish less intensively. But because many populations at Atlantic bluefin are considered severely overpriced crit critics of the industry say that these granting operations are adding to an excessive hunt that is strengthly pushing some population toward commercial extraction. Okay, they excellent say, job. Sorry, okay. I'm going to get you to stop there. Thank you. So I, I just wanted to help with uh, the pronunciation of severely overfished. Just a T sound at the end of fished. Severely overfished. Okay? And the idea of commercial extinction, uh, what's the difference between commercial extinction and species extinction? Anyone? Yes, yes sir. Yeah, yeah, Ismail? Species extinction. Uh, can be uh, 
some species can uh, with naturally extinct in a okay natural way. Ah, all there right. Are, there are a balance in the nature. Some species eat the others, and it can be uh, extinct some species. But okay. when we talk about commercial extinction. Sorry, uh, let me let me just stop you there for a bit, uh, Ismail. Thank you very much. That that's great. Now uh, I would say in English we would say that some species have become extinct because of natural causes or natural factors, and then some uh, species were driven into extinction by man or man-made problems. But commercial extinction, I think, has a little different meaning. Uh, in this context. Uh, and so let me help out in just that the numbers of tuna will fall to a low point and therefore the <clears throat> they will no longer be able to generate money from tuna. So they're not saying that the fish species will become extinct which is to disappear completely but that the population will become so small that people will not be able to generate income from the population. So I think that's the idea with commercial extinction. All right, but, but thank you. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to move down to the next paragraph here. Uh, there are a couple of paragraphs. And so I'd like to move on to, uh, who do we have? Ah, Ugo. Hello? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. welcome. Uh, where where yes, are you calling you. from? Uh, China. Okay, welcome, welcome. Could you please read these two paragraphs for us? Sure, thank you. Uh, blue bluefin tuna. Uh, sorry, could you could you begin with they say? Where? where? Oh, okay. At, at the top of the screen. Um, they say that the fish being caught for ranching are not necessarily counted against international quotas. They are said to conserve the species. Uh, bluefin tuna ranching is also being done in Mexico, targeting populations of the smaller sized Pacific bluefin that are thought to be in better shape than their Atlantic cousins. But given that the overall hunt for tuna throughout the Pacific is steadily growing, and um, Many marine biologists believe that it's only a matter of time before Pacific population are overexploited. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna I'll ask you to stop there. Thank you so much. Great job. Okay. Okay. So we have that uh, one problem is that the fish being caught for ranching are not necessarily counted against the international quotas or limits. <laughs> So that, that seems to be a problem that needs to be resolved. Uh, and that some bluefin tuna ranching is also being done in Mexico with a different uh, population that is thought to be in better shape. What does that mean? And there was an actual, there was an actual mistake there. Better shape than their Atlantic cousins. What, what is the idea? What's the difference between the Pacific bluefin and the Atlantic bluefin populations? Uh, they think that the Pacific bluefin is, has better qualities than the Atlantic bluefin. Oh, okay, now thank you so much. Uh, that, that's, I don't think that's the meaning here though. Bigger than I think, Jeff. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, the, well, no, but that's true where they say that the Pacific bluefin is smaller, but the the idea of being in better shape means that the population of the Pacific bluefin is healthier. There are more fish. The population mm. is healthier. Okay. But even though the Pacific bluefin population is healthier, that there are more fish, there is the 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 Demand for tuna, the fishing for tuna is increasing.
it's steadily increasing. All right. All right, now let's uh, move on. And so we have, um, we have Vicenzo. Hello, Vicenzo. Yes, do you hear me? Yes, welcome. Uh, please tell the group uh, where you're calling from. All right, well, I'm calling from Rome, Italy. Yes, right. uh, <laughs> oh, welcome. I'm not in, uh, Please, could you, now. <laughs> could you read this uh, paragraph for us, please? Yes. Um, let me see. Another issue, a gay, uh, which is, is, is yes, that's it's vanished. Good. Sorry. <laughs> it's vanished. I can see the document. Okay. Now, do you see it now? Uh, no, no. I don't see echo. Echo. Yes, I see it. Another issue, again, it's gone again. It's okay. so, uh, press the the little button below. If you press the, the machine can be can be. Ecco, ecco, it is. It's okay. another time. Allora, another issue again. Center is vanished again. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm going to move on here, but thank you. And uh, okay, me. great. And so we're back to uh, Chilo. Uh, could you read this for us, please? Another issue again centers around the fact that these top pre predictors are fed enormous vo vo volumes of forage fish, which critics say can have a negative impact on marine ecosystems and may involve health risks to humans due to the acc accumulation of text like have been steadily de declining. They say this form of aquaculture consumes far more fish protein than, than it cre creates. Creates. Thank you. Let me let me help you a little bit just with uh, some pronunciation. So creates, okay. creates. Mm -hmm. and uh, accumulation. You did a good job with that. Accumulation and enormous, enormous volumes. Of, what's uh, mean the enormous? Enormous is very very big. Okay. Yeah, and and, and so. Now, what what is the idea here? Uh, there are there is some interesting uh, points being made in this paragraph. Could anyone please uh, rephrase the information in their own words? Could you please uh, paraphrase the information that was in that paragraph? Yes, Jeff. Yes, go ahead, Ismail. Do you have a point? Tuna fish are uh, eating too many small fish, and right. uh, they are uh, consuming more protein, uh, which we get from tuna. Okay. It's a negative balance. Good. It's a negative and balance. So, oh, sorry, I, I, I just like to repeat that because that's a great point. So they're saying that. Ranching tuna does it consumes more fish protein than it creates. It, 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 gener it generates more money, but it consumes more fish protein. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Vicenzo, did you have a comment? Yes. Oh. Yeah, so it's impossible to have a ranching like this, I think. <laughs> because I'm sorry, uh, it's. What? It's impossible uh, to have a rain uh, to ranch tune like in, in this way because they have a, a negative return, econ economics negative return. Do you well, well, understand? Now, oh, okay, no. now, but I, I, it's it's lucrative. Earlier in the um, article, they used lucrative, which means it generates a lot of money. So economically, it's making a lot of money, but What's the problem with feeding enormous volumes of small fish to the tuna? Now, uh, Rosa Maria, did you have a comment? I, I saw your microphone was on. 
For example, in Dajin Grid. I'm sorry, for example. In, in Dan Grid. Yeah, okay, not, right. Yeah. Danger. No. Dangerous? Uh, sorry. But please continue with your idea, Rosa Maria. Uh, endangered. All right. So, yeah, absolutely. So we, we talked about that before, uh, yes. that the, the tuna is endangered. Yes, but there's a... Uh, it yes? Vincent? Toxic. Any problem about toxics? Because yes. all, all this uh, all this amount of or little fish create a, a something toxic, like dioxin, uh, it says. Well, they ac accumulate these toxics. Yeah. And, it's uh, and it's I, very, very dangerous. Yeah, to eat uh, predator, top predator fish, because yeah. they accumulate these toxins. Uh, uh, Chilo, is there any talk in Japan about people being concerned with the quality of the tuna, having uh, toxic substances in the tuna? <laughs> Sorry, may maybe like, usually we, we don't care. And uh, sometimes we read some newspaper and watch the TV. Sometimes uh, show up uh, this problem, but uh, we don't usually okay. talk about right. it. Okay, no good. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. And so, okay, so great. So the points in this are, uh, paragraph are quite um, quite important. So taking all of the fish to feed the tuna has an impact on the marine ecosystem. So they have to uh, fish these small fish. And also yes. there is an accumulation of toxins in the tuna. And just the fact that raising tuna or ranching tuna um, cre uh, consumes more, well it consumes, it uses up more fish protein than it creates. And so there's a negative balance for producing food. All right, okay. so what I'd like to do is we have some viewpoints here from some people and so here's Pedro Garcia and uh, let me see uh, who I, I'd like to go to. Uh, Hami, could you please read this for us? Okay. La Asociación de Naturalistas del Sureste en Saudis, Murcia, Cartagena, Spain. Some of that was uh, Spanish, so yes. great job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, fishing tuna for the farms can be another form of excessive fishing, a form of fishing that can threaten white tuna populations. It is since the arrival of the Japanese market that everything has been complicated. Both uh, with flags of convenience, we're often using our ports and we're fishing tuna in the western Mediterranean. From our point of view, they have greatly contributed to the over-exploitation of the tuna. Okay, great. So this is a Spanish person from Cartagena, Spain. And they're saying that the, uh, the prices offered for tuna in the Japanese market, in his opinion or in their opinion, uh, has really complicated the situation. What, what is the idea of a boat using a flag of convenience? Could someone just turn on their microphone and say hi if, if you have an idea of what that is? Also, for example. Yes, um, so, the Japanese uh, want the profits. Okay. And it's no important in the um, the uh, ecosystems. Now, okay, and and so now uh, they don't say that the Japanese are are fishing. But they, they talk about just the 
the, the selling the tuna to the Japanese market has increased the demand for the tuna. And so, but what is a boat with a flag of convenience? I don't know. Uh, okay. But, yeah. But, Anyone else? Uh, can, uh, can I say? Yeah, sure, Manuel. Well, in my opinion, a flag of convenience is a, a business a enterprise who use a, a specific flag or of a country with uh, to in order to avoid taxes or a number of fishing. So right. a, a business can, can use uh, one month one uh, specific flag and another month another with the uh, boats uh, with a uh, boats registr re registered in with the name in other countries. Yeah, registered, registered, registered in other countries. Right, exactly. So many of the big boats used to move uh, materials. In the in the these are these big tankers or container ships. Many of them are registered in Panama, for example. No, Panama. Yeah, and and so these are countries, as Manuel said, that offer very low tax rates, maybe low regulations. And if I'm a big foreign um, country, uh, and I want to fish in the Western Mediterranean, then I look for a country that will sell me the rights to fish. And so I, I use their flags on my fishing boats. Okay, so great. All right, so let's uh, move on. And uh, sorry, we have uh, uh, Ismail. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I have a comment. Please, go ahead. is isn't about the topic, but I, I am from Murcia. I yes? live near to Cartagena, yes. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Yeah. And so it's uh, there's a large fishing industry based out of Cartagena? Yes, a lot of problem with, with fishing in there. Oh, okay, yeah, great. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Ismail, could you read this? Yes, Jeff. The differences in the fishing methods are huge. There is the traditional fishing with a fish hook where they only fish five tunas each draw. But with the other method, the boats that fish tuna for the farms capture an enormous quantity of tuna from one time alone. The fish that goes to the farms don't pass through longer. The traditional fisherman has to declare everything to longer. The farms do not declare this fish because no one controls the exact number of tuna that the farms produce within them. Okay, great. Thank you. And so, uh, obviously, I, I don't know what longa is. It must be a... Um, no, it's not there. So this must be a regulating body. Uh, does anyone from Spain know what longa is? I don't know. Yeah, sorry. So, what's what's the idea here, Ismail? What's the information in that in that paragraph? Yes, uh, Jeff. Uh, with the technology, the fishing methods are uh, changing, and uh, some fishermen are using uh, sonar equipment, I think, and they are fishing uh, in a huge amount of tuna fish. Right. And then this other problem that the fish caught by the ranchers <coughs> is not being, not being counted. It's not being registered. All it's right, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jacob, uh, are you there? Hello, welcome. Please tell us where you're calling from. I'm um, uh, from Egypt. Okay, great. Egypt. And uh, could you please read this paragraph for us? Yeah. Uh, many of, uh, of the tunas? Please. Uh, many of the tunas uh, capture 
die on their way to the farms, but there are no official statistics when when a boat capture a group of tunas uh, a brushan die at this moment. Another part goes to the farm to the pool on the boat, which is then uh, transferred to the farm in route. Another brushan of the tuna also die. No one knows or who says how many die. Another brushan dies when they arrive at the farm. There is also a fish which are reproducers. Reproducers. It's, a, it's very important to note uh, that the tuna farms capture. Capture reproducing? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, reproducing tunas mm -hmm. Uh, and this Mediterranean, Mediterranean reproducing bank is being but in danger. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. And, and so let me just help you with the pronunciation. So statistics and portion, portion, transferred, transferred, Transfer. and, and then this expression here, during the, during the trip, during the journey, we, it's from French, and so we say en route, en route is how we pronounce it, but it's obviously it comes from French. Reproducers and reproducing. Okay, and uh, so they're, they're talking about the fact that many of these captured tunas who are going to be taken to the ranching facilities die, and nobody is counting the those fish the loss of those fish all right and they are capturing reproducing uh, the the tuna that is reproducing all right so that's one point of view and then maybe we have time to uh, read the opinion of this person uh, Gines Mendes uh, is the president of uh, Masaron, I don't know what that word is. Masaron. Tunas. Oh, oh, is it? It's a type of tuna? No, no, Masaron oh. is a town. Oh, oh okay. Or a city. Oh, a okay. town. So he's the president of the town? or? Okay. No, the president of the organization, I imagine. Right. Oh, okay. Great. So thank tunas you. Tunas means tunas. I, yeah, yeah. We have. Uh, local experts in everything here from Japan to Spain so uh, uh, this is this person has a completely opposite opinion of the uh, ranching and so Manuel could you please uh, read this yes uh, sure the fishermen must continue continue, continue to involve uh, to aquaculture as he did on land from hunter to rancher, from a fruit collector, he be, be, became a farmer. This step has yet to be taken in fishing. Aquaculture is a special opportunity to precisely control uh, many, many variables that can't be controlled when a species grows in the wild. 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 Sorry. And just, no, no, don't, you don't have to apologize. And to evolve, 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 and great. And so that's kind of an interesting uh, opinion. And so uh, I'm just going to uh, ask uh, Rod, could you please read this uh, for us? There has been very intense tuna fishing until now. As a matter of fact, aquaculture has already started to alleviate wild stocks. Tuna aquaculture is a very substantial shock absorber for extractive fishing because fisherman receives as a minimum seven times more for his catch than 15 years earlier. 
if the fisherman gets more resources, Sorry, more Rob. value for his. Please continue. Sorry. <laughs> uh, more va value for his product, he will need to fish less. If in order to feed each tuna, the tuna farmers need to feed it 20 kilos of small fish, then. Then, then this, this is a benefit for all. Okay. The way all right. Uh, now I, I'll I'll ask you to stop there. Thanks. All right. So we have uh, an opposite opinion here, definitely. And then there's there's more information with everyone, but uh, we're out of time, and and so I would just like to say thank you to all of you for joining me and participating in this class. Thank you to our expert from Japan. And thank you from our experts from uh, uh, Spain. And so uh, great job, everybody, um, in understanding and uh, expressing the information uh, in the story. Great job on your pronunciation. So thank you to all of you. I, I hope to see you soon. And take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.